when do you use the function index and when do you use vlookup? In general, I would say index can do anything vlookup can do, but much more. vlookup is very limited, so I warn you for vlookup. It can only look up a value that is in the first column of a table, and then it looks in the second column or the third column for a corresponding value. Index doesn't have that limitation. Why not? Because it can look in any row and in any column. Notice that VLOOKUP has a column number argument, but index also has a row number argument. So it, it has a lot of advantages. Let's um, test all those advantages. In, in this case, we, uh, we can look up in this table any kind of name. Let's say we want to look up Regen. Regen has a date of hire in column to the right and an ID in the column to the left. VLOOKUP can do the one to the right, but not the one to the left. How did we do that here? Let me just show you very briefly. I assume that you have worked with VLOOKUP. It says look up the value in F14 that has now Regen. Use the table array B2 through C14, not A2, because it, it always has to look in the first column of a table. Column index number 2 and the range lookup false or zero. We want an exact match. And it will find all of that. But the ID number cannot be found that way. So we need index. Index needs to know the row and the column number. How does it find the row number of Regen? It does that with the nested function match. Match adds which value are you looking for? Regen in which table? In the table of names. Uh, zero for an exact match. One for the previous value in an ascending order minus one the previous value in a descending order. So let's see what is in that table. Index has two versions, the first and the second one. I always go for the first one. It says look in the array A2 through C14, row number a match function. What did the match function do? It looked for F14, Regen, in B2 through B14 with an exact match, zero, and found that person in row 10. So when we go back to index, it is nested inside index. It says, I will find number 10. And uh, the answer is in column 1. Another situation. Index can also return all the columns in that row. That means an entire record. We see that here. If you look for this plate ID, you will find these values in that record. VLOOKUP can also do that, but it does it differently. I could do it this way. I do it for one cell. I look up that plate number in the table, the entire table. But column index number, I'm going to put in there the function column. Column A1, the column number of A1 is 1. When you copy A1 to the right, it will change into B1, C1. So B1 would be in column 2, C1 in column 3, etc. So VLOOKUP can do this trick. All you have to do is copy that formula to the right if you have the correct locking and relative and absolute addresses. INDEX does that differently. It can return all the columns, but if it if you want it to do that, you have to select multiple cells because it gives you back many answers. They call that a multi-cell array. So we use index, again, the first version. It says in the entire table, find the matching row for that thing. That is row 17, not 18, but 17 because we start the table in row 2. And column 0 and that is where the secret is. Instead of saying look in column 1, 2, 3, 4, we set it to 0. That means index is going to return multiple answers. First the ID, then the date, then the analyst, and the team, and the C value. Don't accept it with OK or Enter, but with Control Shift Enter, because it's an array function. 
And because you had selected multiple cells, you get multiple answers with the array function. If I change that number, how did it highlight that row? I use conditional formatting with the following formula equals a1 equals h18 and lock things properly. Because index can has a row number, you can also manipulate the row number. We did that here. Say in the columns A and B, we want to find out the, the latest entry, the latest month, the latest sales, and we compare it with three months ago, a year ago, and the difference between the two. That's a great issue for index. We look in the columns A and B, the entire columns, because we want to add records at the bottom. How do we know that the latest month is in row 22? We use the count A function. It counts in column A how many entries there are, and the answer is 22. We look in column 1 for the last entry, A22, and we find the latest month. We copy that formula to the right, and all we have to change in the next one is that we say this time we are looking in column 2 in the array A through B. And three months ago, and that is where the trick comes in, we are going to say this time we need the row number based on the count minus 3. That is 19, because the last one is in 22, minus 3 is 19. So it can manipulate the row number. You also need index and not free lookup if you want to create inserts in a chart. Say you want to find out if you know these observation points, the dots are observation points, you want to find this position between that observation point and that observation point. And let's say that is minus 9.81. You know it is somewhere between these two guys. How do you know it is this guy and that guy? You use the index function again. Of course, index can manipulate row numbers. So we are going to find out in the range B2 through C10, in which row is minus 9.81, use the match function. And the match function says we use a match type of minus 1. We look the previous one in a descending order. And we found that one in row 4. Okay, so index looks in row 4, column 1. Copy that formula one cell down. All you have to do is make sure that your row number is now the match function plus 1. It is one further down. Copy the formula to the right. And all you have to change is that you are not looking in column 1 this time, but in column 2. So you got these values, How that is this guy and that guy. How do you find the one in between there based on minus 9.81? You use the trend function, which I will not explain here. So finally, you need the three sets of coordinates, this guy, that guy, and that guy. I plotted them here. So now when I change that minus 9, I, I did that with a control. I won't explain that here. It will move kind of smoothly along that line of observations. Index can also find multiple rows. Bush has multiple visits, multiple orders, whatever. One, two, three, four. Carter has only two. One, two. How did index find that? We use an array function again. We use index a1 through b15 and find the answer in column 2. But I don't know in which row to be because there are many rows. So we use the small function that says if d1 push and later on Carter etc. in the range a1 through a15. If that is the same guy then give me the row number of that guy otherwise no row number. So what, what did it give me? It gave me, it, it found Bush in row 1, not in row 2, not in row 3, not in row 4, but in 6, 11, and 14. 
and then we have to say which one do we want we want the first one and then the second one the third one and the fourth one we do that with column a one again when we copy column a one to the right it will be b1 c1 d1 so it will look for position one two three four in those rows so in the first case it would be one and then six eleven and fourteen and you copy that formula down and you copy them all to the right if you do that you get this and notice that at the end we get error messages how did i hide them you could use conditional formatting if there is an error in e1 or e2 or h1 etc just make the, the the font color the same as the background color white or use the if error function and nest index inside if error with the same kind of tricks i can also return a cell's address say i want to find for all these plates the first five records then the first 10 records etc 5 10 15 20 and average those so we put in here the following formula equals average from b2 through b6 how do i know b6 i use index again index based on column b finds five rows down plus one because of the labels on top and copy that formula down if you have the correct locking it will find all these values beautifully and it will find everything there so it puts an address in there the first one has b2 through b6 with a similar trick i can make this chart update when i add more records at the end again i'm going to create a cell a reference for a1 through a16 and later a1 through a17 this time i do that with a name formula formulas name manager and in the name manager i put for instance the name weeks equals a1 through this time a16 so use index again in column a counts all the cells up to 16 of course in column a and maybe tomorrow 17 18 etc so weeks now represents that the same you do that for temps create that name i showed you here that the name really works i put in there equals weeks equals weeks equals weeks i put in there equals temps if i copy that down it will say i found all these temperatures if you go f farther it will say sorry i have no more values in temps because it stops at b16 so how do you get that into the chart you click on the series of values see the formula up there and you replace a1 through a16 with the name weeks do not delete book name just replace that one and do the same for temps and when you accept that formula then you will find out that from now on this thing will listen to your list so if i type week 17 in there notice that this one showed week 17 because that was the, the range weeks this did not update yet because i don't have a temperature there yet let's say it was 90 degrees and notice how nicely this updates thanks to index again you probably need to know more you want to know more i created for you three cds cd roms and two books that tell you much more about these issues about excel more specifically excel for scientists either the 2007 or 13 version and two books for 2007 or 2013. where do you find them mrexcel.com amazon.com just type my name gerard verschuren and you will find all you need i wish you good luck with index and vlookup.